narcissist in your life who you can't get out of your head? Are you stuck communicating with one because of kids and now live in fear that it's never going to end? Do you get lengthy or multiple messages from your ex filled with accusations about your character or parenting that you dread getting with every fiber of your being because you know you're going to have to craft some response that won't give them more ammunition? If so, I'm really excited to talk about how ChatGPT can start making the narcissist in your life small so that you can start getting some relief. I'm Dr. Jody Banabe, and I'm a clinical psychologist who specializes in helping people who've experienced narcissistic abuse, such as infidelity, trauma, high conflict divorce, custody battles, parallel parenting challenges, and post-separation abuse. Having kids with a narcissist gives them open access to your mind, and boundaries are so important. They gaslight you, guilt trip you, insult you, use condescending remarks or sarcasm, blame you, triangulate other people, even professionals. They want to undermine your credibility any chance they get, create confusion, and basically gain control of the narrative. You'd think they would just move on, but this is about power and control for them. And in the case of your kids, they want to win. So it's not about the kids for them. Healthy-minded co-parents try to get along. That doesn't mean they agree on everything, but they try to reach common ground that really is in the best interests of their kids. Narcissists operate from their own best interest, for their own best interest. And part of that means they can't let things go. They try to dominate and provoke you so that uh, you'll respond in some sort of way that makes you look like whatever narrative they're trying to paint, that you're crazy, unstable, unfit, whatever. And if you're like most people who've been in these relationships, you're probably really triggered when you open up a message gaslighting you or engaging in some other covert manipulation tactics. It's really great if you can enlist the help of some close family member, friends, people who get it to read these messages and, and summarize what they're all about, what's being asked for, but that's not always possible. So here's where ChatGPT can come into play. My caveat here is that I'm not an attorney, so always consult with one if you can. And none of this is meant to be a substitute for therapy. So if you have any kind of trauma, please find a good trauma therapist who understands narcissistic abuse. But I know how difficult it can be when these personality types target you. So these are just meant to be some strategies to help you deal with the situation using technology. If you haven't heard of ChatGPT, um, it's basically an advanced chat bot that's designed to understand data or any questions you feed it. And it's supposed to give you a human-like reply. And while it doesn't understand all the nuances of communication, it can be really helpful when corresponding or, you know, interacting with high conflict personalities. So let's talk for a moment about how you feel when you receive a message from the narcissist in your life. A lot of people who've been on the receiving end of a narcissist or who've gone through court are pretty traumatized. And for people dealing with flying monkeys or professionals who've manipulated, who've been manipulated, you end up constantly questioning your reality. Um, and I'm going to use the term narcissist here um, loosely. So there are a cluster of narcissistic personality disorder traits under that diagnosis. This isn't meant to provide a diagnosis. But I tend to think, so basically high conflict personalities of any kind, chat GPT can be used for. Um, but I also think that so many people who have been targeted end up really not trusting their intuition about what they've experienced. So putting that aside, right, I really want to be able to um, help people understand how they can use this technology piece to just communicate with jerks. So when you get these messages, they're emotionally loaded for you. You can become overwhelmed and shut down. You may even avoid opening these messages for a while, which isn't great, but it's understandable. Eventually, you have to get to them, right? And hopefully in a timely manner, because that's really best. You also may want to defend yourself. Um, you know, it's... It's it's hard not to do that when you've got somebody just creating a list of lies and putting it out there and 
you know, especially if you have anybody else who may be reading these messages, like any court professionals or therapists. Um, the other piece of this is you might be really compelled to fight back. So many people who have felt like they don't have a voice want to clarify things, but there's a there's an edge that they might have in their responses that can also you know, be used against you. So it's not really productive to respond in those ways. And your ex is just going to try to use whatever your response is to make you look bad. And that's probably not characteristic of who you are anyway. You're just fed up and you want to end it. Um, most people are, are really worn down from dealing with this type of situation and sick of it. They wonder, you know, is this ever going to end? It's not a healthy space to exist in, in in a short or long-term way. Like physically, it's it's not healthy for you and our minds and bodies are connected. So it's really important for you to find ways to have boundaries with these personalities and just make them as small as possible in your life. They don't deserve to take up space in your mind at all. So here are some ways to use ChatGPT to help out. First, you can use it to analyze the tone of any messages you might get and then summarize them. So the reason this might be helpful is if you've had any kind of dealings that were, or, you know, if there's anything in that message that could be really triggering and chances are, you know, if you're watching this, that there are. So, um, you know, you want it to analyze the tone and you're going to get like a little tone paragraph or whatever from chat GPT. So it's kind of this validation that this person sounds this way to you, that it's not, it's one way of kind of taking off that layer of you being gaslit and really questioning reality. So I'm going to show my screen here um, using chat GPT. And, and then also the other piece of it is I'm going to show a summary of the message because what I have found is that when people read these messages, it's, it's sort of the voice that you hear in your head is their voice, their tone all of it. Um, and so what ends up happening is, you know, we have this really strong sense of intuition that when we've been on the receiving end of this behavior, we learn to really shove down and, and, you know, discount. So question, right? So something that is innate to us, our sense of intuition, we learn to really just ignore. And so I think it's really important for people to try to use their intuition as much as possible. And chat GPT, believe it or not, is one way that you can have tone get analyzed on these messages. Um, so I have a message here that was written by AI, so artificial intelligence chat GPT. And I just simply input, write a mock email from a narcissistic ex engaged in a custody battle who makes accusation, accusations against the co-parent. So I'm going to read this and it may be triggering because it may sound similar to some of the messages you receive. However, use it as a reminder that even AI thinks that narcissists operate out of the same playbook. So let me pull this up and share my screen here. Okay, here we go. Subject, urgent custody matter, concerns about our child's well-being. Dear co-parent's name. I hope this email finds you well, although I have my doubts considering your recent behavior and the concerning impact it has on our child. As we continue our custody battle, which nobody says, but whatever, I feel it is crucial to bring certain matters to your attention. I can no longer ignore the detrimental effects of your parenting style on our child's well-being. First and foremost, I must express my deep concern about your inability to prioritize our child's needs over your own. It is disheartening to witness the consistent lack of responsibility and accountability that you exhibit as a parent. From failing to ensure a stable routine to consistently indulging in self-centered activities, it is clear that our child's best interests are not your main focus. Furthermore, it has come to my attention that you engage in questionable behaviors that, in, that directly influence our child's safety. Your choice of companions raises serious red flags and their involvement in our child's life is both inappropriate and detrimental. It is crucial for our child's well-being that we maintain a stable and nurturing environment free from the negative influences that you continuously surround yourself with. I must also address the alarming emotional manipulation that you subject our child to. Your consistent need for attention and validation leads you to exploit our child's vulnerability, using them as a pawn to boost your own ego. 
This is an unacceptable way to parent, and it is my duty to ensure our child is protected from such harmful dynamics. It is vital that you reflect on your actions and acknowledge the impact they have on our child. I implore you to prioritize their needs rather than your own selfish desires. Our child deserves a stable and nurturing environment free from the negative influences and emotional manipulation that you consistently exhibit. As we proceed with the custody battle, I trust that the court will take these concerns into account and make decisions in the best interest of our child's well-being. I urge you to take this opportunity to reevaluate your parenting approach and make the necessary changes to provide a safe and loving environment for our child. I eagerly await your prompt response and sincere commitment to putting our child's welfare first. Let us remember that this battle is not about our personal vendettas, but rather about securing the best possible future for our beloved child. Yours sincerely. Whatever. So, um, yeah, uh, that sounds like a really narcissistic message, right? Um, and it's annoying to get, and it's lots of projection. They make accusations about you, right? That you're, you know, um, engaging in questionable behavior, you know, and, and the other piece of this is that often, um, they might, copy, I mean, granted, if you're using talking parents or our family wizard, it's a little different. But if you know, there might be the message that you send or they send might be copied to other people. Um, it makes sense if it's an attorney, perhaps, but anybody else like their parents or siblings or um, anyone they're dating, right? That's, um, yeah, that's what they do. So uh, professionals, right, that they're trying to man manipulate so analyzing the tone of the message. This is just what I wrote. I just put in the prompt, analyze the tone of this message. And I copied and pasted the message, which you can do even if you're using a communication platform. And it said, the tone of this mes message is confrontational, critical, and accusatory. It expresses deep concern and disappointment with the recipient's parenting style and behavior, emphasizing the negative impact, uh, impact on the child's well-being. It also uses strong language to address issues of prioritization, questionable behavior, emotional manipulation, and selfishness. The message seeks to prompt reflection, change, and a commitment to the child's welfare while acknowledging the ongoing custody battle and the importance of court decisions. So imagine you get this email and you are message. I'll use that interchangeably. And, you know, you're sitting there and you're feeling sick to your stomach about, oh gosh, it's a Friday. And you probably got like 15 messages or whatever. Um, and you, you know, and it's like, how do these people not have a life? They don't have a life, right? They're sitting there plotting and colluding and thinking about this stuff about how to get at you. So, and that may sound paranoid to some people, but when you've um, gone through something like this, it's not paranoid, it's preparation, right? For you to acknowledge that this goes on. So um, I think it can be helpful to just look at the tone, right? Imagine you don't read the message first, you just copy and paste it and you say, analyze the tone and you can see going into it and kind of do the eye roll thing to kind of prepare yourself a little bit. Sometimes that preparation really can help. Um, and the other piece of this is, you know, people get really lengthy emails. I mean, these folks love hearing themselves speak, right? And they want to, again, dominate you. So they write these really lengthy messages to you. Um, and they just go on and on, right? And you're just like, oh, geez, couldn't you just say this like in one paragraph? Yes, they could have, but that's not what they want. They want to be in your head, right? So the tone might be one way. The other piece of this is that you can um, ask it to just kind of summarize the main points. So I had here in this next section here, I asked chat GPT, what are the main points from this message? And I copied and pasted it again. And it gave me a list of main points. So again, it's not reading the person's words exactly. So the, the caveat here though, is you do want to read these messages eventually, right? Like you want to maybe take some steps here and we can talk a little bit more about that. But the main points from this message are one, expressing concern about the co-parent's recent behavior and its impact on the child's well-being. Two, criticizing the co-parent for failing to prioritize the child's needs over their own and lacking responsibility and accountability. Three, highlighting questionable behaviors and the negative influences surrounding the child due to the co-parent's choices. 
for addressing emotional manipulation and using the child for personal gain, um, emphasizing that it is unacceptable parenting. Five, urging the co-parent to reflect on their actions, prioritize the child's needs, and make necessary changes for a stable and nurturing environment. Six, trusting that the court will consider these concerns during the custody battle and make decisions in the child's best interests. Seven, encouraging the co-parent to reevaluate their parenting approach and prioritize the child's welfare. And eight, requesting a prompt response and sincere commitment to the child's well-being, emphasizing that the custody battle is about securing the child's future. So again, imagine you take these two steps and then you... Um, you know, so you know going into it, you're like, okay, well, let me just, now I'm going to read it just to make sure or have somebody else read it and go, yeah, that pretty much, if you can, that encapsulates everything that captures everything. And, and, you know, so then you don't have to, the less you can have this person's words in your head, the better. Um, again, the, the piece of that is though, you don't want to miss anything, right? If it's really critical, but here's the other piece of how you can use this. So there are no questions in that message. It's just pedantic. It's blah, 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 you suck. That's what the person's saying. You suck. And I want to put on a record that you suck. I'm painting this picture of your suckage. Um, so yeah. So I copied and pasted it originally. And I asked, list any questions that need to be answered from this message. So I did that. And it gave me a whole slew of messages or, or of of questions that were in the message that, yeah, are implied sort of, but they're not real questions. I mean, it's just, right, so th that's the tricky part. So we wanna rewrite it a little differently, but you can see here the questions, can you explain your recent behavior and, the addr and address the concerning impact it has on our child? Well, if you look at the message, there's no, um, you know, I, yeah, there's nothing here that is, doing that. I mean, the person is like, I must express deep concern about your inability to prioritize, but it's not a question, right? Um, how do you plan to prioritize our child's needs over your own? Wow, projection. Um, can you provide justification for the lack of responsibility and accountability you exhibit as a parent? Some of them actually write that in, um, you know, they, they love writing and it's not here, but like explain your rationale. It's a go-to. And yes, you want to communicate, right? It's co-parenting, even though it's really parallel parenting, but it's, um, you know, they want, they just want to be in your head, right? So keep that in mind. So what steps um, will you take to ensure a stable routine for our child? Okay, that could be a valid question if that was part of it, but that's not, it wasn't part of the, um, you know, it's just this person mentioning that they have concerns basically about the routine that the person doesn't have a routine it raises red flags right the behavior uh, the, the parent the recipient parents behavior raises red flags etc um can you adjust the concerns raised about your choice of companions and their involvement in our child's life well it depends on if you have a court order do you have to do that <laughs> i don't think so how do you plan to create a stable and nurturing environment free from negative influences all of these are just inappropriate boundaryless questions can you provide an explanation for the emotional manipulation our child is subjected to what actions will you take to protect our child from such harmful dynamics it just goes on and on none of this is like um relevant um so what I did is I put in questions specifically using a question mark um, to see um, here. So I will highlight them here. So you can see this, this is the first paragraph of this message and I highlighted, I'm highlighting here, why am I such a jerk? <laughs> um, um, then why do I sleep with my teddy bear? It's the same message, it's, it's not like a coherent thing. Do you know I'm a fraud? And then how is your cat? And the prompt I used was extract any questions in this message. And so what we got here is it left off, how is my cat? So what I found is with ChatGPT that if you say extract any questions, it may miss it. Um, but here's the thing. If you say list all questions, and I don't know about extract all, but list all questions in this message. And I did the same thing here and I have same message here, uh, you know, urgent custody matter, concerns about our child's well-being. And I've got, um, why am I such a jerk here? Why do I sleep with my teddy bear? I don't know. I like teddy bears, right? Do you know I'm a fraud? How was your cat? So I just 
random. And it did say the questions in this message are as follows. Why am I such a jerk? Why do I sleep, sleep, still sleep with my teddy bear? Do you know I'm a fraud? Um, do you know I'm a fraud? Sorry. How, how is your cat? So, and then it says, please note that these questions are extracted from the provided text, but may not necessarily reflect appropriate or relevant inquiries in a custody battle situation, which is an interesting commentary. Um, so there is that. Um, the other piece of this that I think could be really helpful, like super helpful, is crafting responses. So you have to be really careful with this because um, I, I'll, I'll show you. So I wrote, write an appropriate message to this message, <laughs> a little redundant. And so I copied and pasted it. And then it says here, this lengthy message that also sounds kind of narcissistic, right? Um, let me see here. Yeah, it's in gray. So it basically kind of writes a similar message. Um, I won't get too much into this, but it looks like it's, I don't know, it copied, I don't know. It just copied the same exact message so <laughs> that the narcissist wrote. So that's kind of funny. Um, then I wrote, write an appropriate message to this narcissistic ex. And it did the exact same thing. So that doesn't work. So then I wrote, write a brief and appropriate message to this narcissist. Um, copied and pasted it. And it still comes up with, right, like a very similar message, if not the same. No, it's different. Because at the end, it says, together, we can create a positive co-parenting dynamic that fosters our child's happiness and well-being. And in the narcissist's email, it says, let us remember this battle is not about our personal vendettas, etc. All right. I tried to write a response. That didn't come out well. Then I tried write a brief. It should have said boundaried, but I think my spell spelling autocorrect thing changed it. Write a brief and boundaried response. And so then it comes up with, um, hmm, really not brief, <laughs> basically. Then I tried write a brief, informative, friendly, firm response and copied and pasted it and doesn't look brief at all. Okay, so we're, that does not. Then I wrote write a brief response, to, a very brief response to this message, copied and pasted it. Here we go. That's different. Dear blank. Thank you for expressing concerns regarding our child's well-being. I agree that their happiness and safety are of utmost importance. Let's focus on working together to ensure a positive and nurturing environment for our child's future. You might be gagging right now, imagining writing that to your ex. So um, so then I tried this. So let me let me back up. So there is something when it comes to writing messages you want to address whatever it is, not all of it, but if there is anything pertinent, right? Like regarding your custody order, if you have one. So you want to address those issues. If there is anything in your custody order, um, you know, asking about like switching schools or whatever. Um, but this message didn't have anything relevant. Now, mind you, it is expressing a lot of concerns that, you know, imagine this person wasn't dis personality had I want to say disordered or whatever um didn't have character logical issues and it was like a healthy parent that had concerns I don't think a healthy parent would write that message but there is this idea though of documenting right are there concerns going on you know but it, it's not the way this was written right so um when it comes to your responses you want to make sure they're short because you want to have boundaries. Part of boundaries is that you're not responding to everything. You're not defending. You, this person doesn't get to talk about Jack when it comes to your life, the particulars of your life. They can discuss, hey, what, um, you know, and if it's part of your court order, what extracurriculars, you know, little Sally, Sue, whatever is going to be in. Um, or, hey, you know, I got this bill. I just wanted to check in about this, about, you know, the, the healthcare practice bill, whatever. Um, but it's not the anything personal about your life. And the fact that this 
person is doing it um, means that you really have to just reinforce boundaries, even if you're triggered. So it's important for you to check in with yourself and go, okay, what is my first impulse here? When I get these messages, is it to just knee jerk, bam, I want to stand up for myself? Yeah. Um, is it getting defensive and clarifying things? Um, you know, do you also feel sort of, you know, this, this uh, the, the, yeah, you're getting pulled into it, right? This person wants to be part of your life. They don't want to be out of your life. They want to make your life small. And so that the response is to just have these boundaries and make them small, right? So you want your response to be short or brief. Um, you want it to address the points that they, um, the, the, the points you need to address, right? So you've got to give them the information. It's, it's got to be friendly enough. And it's not like, Hey, do you want to come over for dinner? Don't do that. Um, it's more of the, um, you know, thank you, please. Right. But it also has to be firm when it comes to, you know, just the boundaries that are there. And if you were to say something in this, in this, in your response, like it's inappropriate for you to comment on my personal life, you can do that, but it's also throwing them a bone to know that it bothers you. So yeah, I, again, not a substitute for legal advice, but I think that that would probably, it's just a waste of your energy, right? The person's schmuck <laughs> you know just know that so here's what i wrote and i liked this response um so um so maybe any kind of combination there's a couple here i'll just read let me share my screen again so i copied and pasted it here and i wrote write a very brief response to this message copied and pasted it and it says, dear co-parent's name, I appreciate your concerns and commitment to our child's well-being. And I'm also dedicated to their happiness and safety throughout the custody process. Okay, that's, you know, you still might want to gag a little bit writing it. Um, but you are dedicated to their happiness and safety. And you probably wouldn't say throughout the custody process, you know, kind of thing. But it's, you're responding to the AI message and or the AI is responding to the AI message, but you're X probably won't say that, um, but they might because they tend to be kind of robotic. So then I wrote, write a very brief response to this message. And let me put respond to accusations using only one sentence per accusation. So let's see. It comes up with, dear co-parent's name, I appreciate your concerns and assure you that I prioritize our child's needs and well-being. So you are addressing something that all of the many accusations they have. Um, regarding stability, I'm committed to establishing a consistent routine for our child. I understand your worries about my choices of companions, but I assure you, I prioritize our child's safety. I am dedicated to providing a nurturing environment free from uh, negative influences. I value our child's emotional well-being and will continue to support them without manipulation. I am, which, yeah, I wouldn't suggest writing that. I'm open to self-reflection and making any necessary changes to ensure our child's welfare. So that's another E, you know, <laughs> let's not do that. Um, let's continue working together to ensure the best future for our beloved child. So then, so I, I didn't, I didn't really like that one. Write a very brief response to this message. Respond to accusations with firm boundaries copied and pasted it. And then I appreciate your concerns, but it's important to establish respectful, respectful boundaries in our communication. I assure you that I prioritize our child's needs and well-being. While we may have different parenting styles, it's crucial to focus on the best interests of our child. I'm committed to providing a safe and nurturing environment for our child. Let's work together constructively and rely on the court to make decisions based on our child's well-being. So Actually, I think that one's pretty good. So some kind of combination of that one and the really brief one here. And so you can kind of put it together. I mean, the idea behind this is to, um, and this is the short one here. I appreciate your concerns. Um, that one just might be fine too. Um, so, I mean, the, the, the gist of this is it's, you don't want to spend your entire weekend writing draft after draft of, of responses to this person. Um, that's not going to help you get them out of your head. It's not going to help reducing your triggers. Very often people keep getting triggered so much. Um, and it's hard for them to engage in any kind of like real trauma work of substance because they're in the thick of it. And so if you are in the trenches, this keeps you there. And I understand it is incredibly anxiety provoking when you're going through like a custody battle, custody situation, 
Um, and it is the case that these folks are so manipulative and, and often engage in these covert manipulative manipulation tactics so that even professionals don't see it. And they're, you know, they can be charming. They can be the boy scout or girl scout, whatever, um, type personality and, and look really good. And, and it's so easy for you to seem like you have an agenda. I mean, you might have reacted poorly once or twice. And by poorly, I mean like standing up for yourself. I don't think that's poor in any other circumstance, if you think of your kids getting bullied at school or something, you probably want to have a discussion with them about how do you assert yourself? How do you have boundaries, right? And whenever kids speak, depending on their age, um, you know, how do you handle things appropriately by going to officials? But in a lot of cases, when it comes to court matters, you know, you're sort of like, can I trust this official? Um, because sometimes, you know, it's they're human and they can be manipulated too. Um, and so, you know, for you, it's really important as you go through this to think about what are your triggers? Um, how can you start making them small in your mind, right? Don't spend a ton of energy on this stuff. Um, address what you need to address. And I understand that sometimes there are much more complicated things to address. I mean, I know it's hard when you get literally 15 messages on a Friday or something that if you print out, um, print out the message, it's like 15 pages. Um, you know, you'll see oftentimes too going through court, you know, your ex will write a response that is like clearly written by them and very personally um, attacking you and, you know, where they don't have to write a response, that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, I, I hope you find this, you found this helpful. Um, I think there are other tips and tricks I'll, I'll think of. Um, I keep playing around with ChatGPT. I'd encourage you to do the same. Um, it's just, I think it's important again to make them as small as possible because you deserve to live a good life and, um, get them out of your head, right? Think of how much that space they take up and how you're walking on eggshells, even when you're not hearing from them. And in fact, some people get anticipatory anxiety because they're stuck in this loop of, you know, when's it coming? When's the next thing? Um, you know, and, and so use this as a tool, um, get some counseling if you need it. Again, ask your counselor, do they understand now narcissistic abuse? Um, and there's different types of trauma therapies and like what kinds of trauma therapies, um, do they do? How do they handle this kind of situation? Uh, and do they know court processes if you are going through court, um, so that they know the terms. So you're not having to like educate your counselor if at all possible, but that doesn't mean a good trauma therapist can't help you even if they're not familiar with court matters. Yeah. So, um, I guess that's it for me. Uh, I'm going to be posting some other videos, uh, that hopefully will be helpful in this area. Thanks.